Now, I gassed a lot for to tie certain flies or basically like this pattern here. I could tie a caddis pattern without weight for the locks. So basically there's quite a few caddis you could tie. But this is a good pattern. Uh, there's a lot to it in a way, but you could slim it down different things. But overall this is a really nice pattern. Now, hook choice is up to yourself. Uh, this is a heavy wire hook. This is a Super Grub uh, from Full and Mill. Uh, it's a good strong hook, size 12. Thread I'm going to be using. I'm just going to use a light colour thread, just basically to bring out the colour of the... or keep the, the body... I don't want to darken it down too much, so using a lighter colour thread helps. So what we're going to do is start at the eye, and then we're going to come down about a third of the way to the, the length of the fly. And then I'm going to tie in a, a fluorescent orange wire, it's called. This is the one here. This one here is from UTC. It doesn't look really fluorescent orange, but it is fluorescent if you put the light on it. But it's a lovely colour, and it shows up in the rib of the fly, and that's what I want to do. Now, we catch this in the way down. It's much easier to do that. You basically come round the bend, just to this point here. Now for the back and for the back of the caddis and the thorax cover I'm going to use pheasant tail fibre. This is a cock pheasant tail. It's a natural brown. Now you want quite a few fibres. So what we do is just bring it 90 degrees from the stem, tear it away. And then what I'm going to do is come round and tighten by the close to the tips so we can have a loose turn. Just pull the tips in to as close as you can dare go, and then we can tighten them up. They'll come up about maybe two, three mil. Then we tie in some. This is a nice amber. It's very close colour to the the, the yellow, uh, or the well, it's basically the fluorescent orange wire. Uh, well, it's a wee bit brighter, but this is a great colour. It's it's a slightly or it's got a bit of orange in it. It's, uh, it's a llama wool a friend of mine died, and uh, it just suits the caddis, it's one of the colours I like. Now I'm just going to lightly dub it on. Basically this is like a, what I would call a reservoir of dubbing, because what I'm going to do is get it caught, get it started, to the anchor point there, and I'm going to lightly dub it on at the back, and work towards the pheasant tail, and then I'm going to work my way up. Just stretching it out when I need to. So you're basically feeding the, the dubbing into the onto the body. And just work your way up. You've got a nice shape in the caddis body, it's got a decent abdomen that's uh, very pronounced, you can see it. And we get near the top to the two thirds of the way up. Still adding on a wee bit of dubbing just to get the shape. I'm looking at it all the time. With a good carrot like shape, and you're happy, then we can take away the excess and then trim away. There we are, that's fine. Now the pheasant tail fibre becomes the back of the pupa, and as well, it's going to be, I'm just going to leave this on because. This is going to be the thorax cover. So we'll lay it across the back and then we bring our rib up. So we do a straight turn at the back and then basically work our way up. We're looking for a good, in this case there's seven turns there or so. And you catch this in on the side and show it once I've cut it in so you can see what it's like. See how it comes out really well. Uh, makes for a great body. So at this point I'm just making sure I've got the wire tied in. Peasant tail fibre, I'm going to draw it back. But before I really do that, I'm going to bend and break away the wire. Now with your nail, just open out the pheasant tail fibres. Just use your nail to spread them. And then work back towards the body. So here we are. And that's going to be your, your thorax cover. Now, for the wing I'm going to be using, this is uh, duck feather. This is basically dyed fiery brown. Now, domestic duck, 
is that what this is, can normally is obviously white. Uh, and then you can dye it, in this case it's a fiery brown cinnamon. You can buy it like this. The fiery brown I dyed myself. So basically what you need is a right and a left feather. So you just slip from either side, which I've taken away. And then what I'm going to do is just line up and tie in the underside of this flyer, the caddis. So we turn it upside down, it's easier to tie it. So what I've got here is a right and a left. You can see the, the base of the front of the, the feather, the tips meeting. So we're tying it upside down. And we tie this on, so there's slightly on the underside of the body. Now I'm just going to hold it. Just hold it best you can. And then pinch and loop a couple of turns just to see where we are. Just to move them around. Just checking. This side sitting about perfect. The other one's slightly off, so it's quite easy just to go back, hold the wing tips, come back, and then just allow it just to come round a wee bit. Two or three more turns. Once you've tied it in, uh, you'll be able to basically go back. That looks okay. If you're happy with it, then you can tighten up. Just going to remove the excess. Now that's the fiddliest bit of this fly, really. Just tying the wings in. We've got wax on my thread. There we are. Looks fine. For the thorax, I'm just going to use a light coloured dubbin, a natural dubbin, and uh, just build it up. So I normally like to be, take the thread towards the eye. And they're a good, they're a head length away. I'm just going to put some of this dubbin in. This is just a blend of my own. It's just basically a rabbit. And a bit of mask, we've got some of the mask mixed in, and a wee bit of UV. It's a dub and I like using, and it works well for me. So, what we're doing here, we're going to work towards or up the thorax towards the wing, just building it up. See where we are. So, we've got that continuous taper. That's about right, and then as we work through, we're actually tightening it up when we need to. And just before we get to the head, take away the excess. Nice and tight. Just pulling my stroke back the fibres, it's going forward. Move it back so on my thread, see where we are. That looks fine. Now I'm going to tie in a hackle. It's just a it's basically a, a furnace a hen, it's just a cheap Indian hen. So, take a feather away. The one's lying on my desk, I'll see if I pull them one out. Fibre length is basically, uh, you're looking the tips towards the pointed hook, or just slightly less. So, when you tie this in by the tip, so I use my hackle plastic to locate the point of the hackle. Come away and leave enough to tie it in. Now I have waxed my thread, so I should give myself plenty of grip. So just catch it on. Again, make sure there's no fibres going forward. You touch a wax. I'll use my hackle plier so you can see what I'm doing. And then all I'm doing is folding the hackle and drawing it back. Now I'm doing that lightly. It's easy to do. So we do a Basically, a turn and pull back the fibres as we wind. Okay, happy with that. Looking for a couple of turns at least. Two or three turns to hold. Always keep the thread tight. Just folding back the hackle. Keep the thread tight and then you can break that off. Now, what I'm going to do here is just make a space for the pheasant tail fibre. But before I pull it over, what I'm going to do is tie in some horns. I'm just going back to the pheasant tail. So I've got two fibres. Just again bring them 90 degrees from the stem, which will line them up. I want these basically on the side. Not too long. Just You're looking just slightly by back of the hook. So we catch them in, using the body to separate them. 
see that, there we are. So again, fold them back two or three times to hold. And then trim them away. And what I'm going to do here, I'm just going to bring down some of the, the fibres on top of the dubbing. So I'm just going to hold the hackle and tips of the, the horns out of the way and then bring it over. So we've got the thorax cover coming over. Now you may see one or two of the fibres twisted there. So if you feel it's a bit too much twisted, it's easy enough just to go in and line them up. Just take your time. There's one here that's crossed over, so I just... They'll marry together when they're sitting. So if you take your time, you'll end up a better looking fly. Uh, there we are. Catch them on top. Two or three turns. Again, lift this up, nice trim, nice clean cut, and then we build up the head with the thread. Yeah, you see in what finish? Trim away the thread. Now the horns are obviously sitting a wee bit out, so what I'm going to do is just Crease them, just all it's quite simple. All you do is put your finger on the side, you'll see the fibre or the wing or the horn, sorry, come towards the eye. You'll crease it, you'll see it's come in. Same on the other side, it's easy, just put your finger on it lightly, draw it towards the eye, and that will draw them in. And there we are, so they're sitting far better. Now, what I want to do is colour the head up. Now before I do that, what I like to do is get some super glue. Now if you put the colour, cut it, I'm going to colour it with a permanent marker pen, a brown one, this one. Now if you put this on to just the thread, it will spread. I mean it will go all over the place. If you want to control it, the easiest way to do it is, and you do this with a lot of things. I do this with my salmon flies as well. We touch a super glue on the head first, just lightly. Take your time and allow that to dry. Now, if you've not got the super glue, just use varnish, clear varnish. Then, fine coat on and allow it to dry. Just make sure the, the head's clear. There's a couple of wee fibres there, so what I usually like to do is the back of my nail. You'll always get a wee bit of hair or something caught in. So, I'm just using the back of the nail. Push them or flatten them down. And at the same time, allowing the super glue to dry. It doesn't take long. See what it's like. Feel it. There we are. And then what we want to do is get a permanent marker. I'm just going to mark the top of the head. Now red's good colour for doing this as well as a brown. So we just touch the top of the head with it. And again, what we do is allow that to, to dry. Just tapping it as well. I usually sit and do three or four or more of these and give that time to dry, but we'll keep it on. Just get a, a below a second or so. And then we go to our clear varnish. And then we just simply Varnish the head, all the way around. Obviously the super glue acts as a first coat. The varnish finishes it off. And there we go. And there's your Cardis pupa. This is a basic, this is a standard everyday Cardis type style of fly. You can change the colour. Uh, it's a nice pattern, it's a nice style. Uh, the hook you can change. There's two or three hooks you could use. There's one I've been using this as another one from uh, Phil and Mill. It's this one, it's got a, a, a straighter hook, it's a barbless version. And I think I may have one tied. Uh, I should have, anyway. There's a cinnamon version, slightly bigger. So it's a lighter wing on it. 
It's just a style of hook. It suits. It's a strong hook if you want to catch release. Uh, so you can experiment with the hooks. So you don't have to use the exact same one I'm using. But anyway, there you go. It's a nice cinnamon or caddis pupa. It certainly is worth tying. A uh, bit more fiddly than normal, especially the wing. Once you're tying them in, you look at the back, as you can see. So anyway, I hope you enjoyed that. And uh, if you enjoyed the videos, please subscribe and thank you for watching.